In this video, I will show you how to install and start with MicroOS to get a smooth start. Hi, my name is Jean from Linux Guides and welcome to my new video. In this tutorial, we are gonna download MicroOS and install it and afterwards I give you some useful tips for drivers, additional software and my very personal hints. So. At first, let us head over to openzuse.org. You can find microOS here or just head over to microOS.openzuse.org. You can click on download and here we can download an ISO image, which is in my opinion, the one you want to install, but you have a better overview over the downloads on microOS.openzuse.org. I head here over to downloads and can also download the x86 and 64 ISO image. I downloaded it here. It needs some time. Afterwards, create a live USB stick. You can do this with Etcher. I put you the link into the video description. Afterwards, you start your computer from your created USB boot stick. In the menu, you select installation. Now the kernel is starting. It is loading basic drivers. And after some time, we have here our installer, which is initializing our network configuration. This works completely automatic. This takes a bit. And afterwards, we have our language setting, keyboard setting, and licensing. I select my keyboard layout, and in the end, I want to accept it. Okay, now we see the buttons, and I select next here. Now it is analyzing our computer. And in my case, I have nothing else on my computer. So it wipes the complete hard disk and just installs micro OS on it. I show it today to you how to install micro OS desktop with GNOME. At the current state, the KDE Plasma version isn't really recommended because it's an early alpha stadium. I go with the GNOME version here. I select next right down here. Now we can define an NTP server. In the most cases, you don't change anything and click on next. And now we can define a password for the root user. The password for your real user will be defined after installation. Here you can, if you want, um, import an SSH key. In my case, I don't have anything here. So I select next and after that, we can now overview our installation settings. We see here, okay, create GPT on dev SDA means, okay, it wipes the complete hard disk, which is in my case completely okay. You can also adjust something in the installation settings. For example, the firewall, the SSH service, but for me, the default is completely okay. And I select install and confirm the installation. That takes a bit of time. After some minutes, micro OS is rebooting and here you have to select boot from hard disk if you didn't plug out your USB stick. In my case, I select boot from hard disk and here we now see the open SUSE startup menu. We want to start up open SUSE micro OS, the first one. And yeah, let us start our system. At the first window, we can select our language. I go with English here and select next. Now I can configure my keyboard layout. In this case, I want the German one. I already selected in the installation. And in my case, I want to enable the location service, but you can disable it here if you want. And at the next window, I select my time zone. I'm typing in Berlin and here we have it, Berlin, Berlin, Germany. I select this one and select next. And now I can connect to online accounts if I want. You can connect to Microsoft, Nextcloud or Google. I'm heading with Nextcloud here. You could, but you don't have to. I click on connect and this is connected. Select next. Now I can type in my full name and then a username for me is generated. This is okay for me. I select next. Now I can set a very, very, very strong password. <laughs> and this is okay for me. And now I can start using OpenSUSE MicroOS. Let's start. And at the first start, MicroOS is installing some 
applications like Firefox, I guess some other utilities here too. And um, yeah, we have to wait a minute until this is finished. After the Firefox is installed, I select my Firefox web browser here. And um, yeah, for me personally, I download a another wallpaper image. I'm going with this one. I put you the link into the video description. I download this picture here, head over to my folder and put it into the pictures folder here. I did it with control X and control V, but you can also do it with cut and at the next point paste, but this is okay for me. Um, now I select my picture here and select set as background and select set. And after a short time, it is now changed. And now in my opinion, the system looks much more cleaner and nice and a bit more friendly. So I close Firefox here. And in the end, we don't have too many apps. We have an extension manager, text editor, calculator, settings, system monitor, terminal, disks, tweaks, and to help with Firefox software and files. So let us head over to software and install a few things. At first, I select this one here and select install. After that, I'm installing a video player. You can either choose VLC or I'm going with celluloid. Here we have it. It is, in my opinion, a very great video player. After that, we head over to the search and search for a document viewer that you can display PDF files. I'm going with the document viewer here. It is from the GNOME project. I select install. And after that, I have to create some documents. So I'm heading over to LibreOffice here and install LibreOffice 2. You see, the whole system only has flat packs available. That is a big concept of microOS, but you can also install some traditional RPM packages. We will come to that in a second. After that, I'm heading over to Thunderbird, which I also want to install. So I head over to Thunderbird, perfect flat hub and install it here. If you are missing some more basic apps, you can go to apps.gnome.org. Here, here you see all core apps of GNOME, maybe calendar, contacts, the new console, fonts, or for example, weather. But you also see the circle apps, which are also very great GNOME apps, which can fulfill your desktop experience. And I think all of these are available in FlatHub. So you can, for example, install Blanket. I select Blanket here. And here under Get Involved, we see Get the app and we get a link to FlatHub. I select install it here. I could select install and click on the file or I also can just search after blanket and here we see perfect. We can install it too. It has some sounds which should increase your productivity. Perfect. These are the basic apps I recommend you to your micro OS experience after the installation, which is quite fast in my opinion. We have many apps here. With them, you can now start working on your micro OS machine. In the end, if you have an NVIDIA card on your system, you can install it with these commands, which is quite working. If you have another better instruction, then post it into the comments. I will link it in the video description. But now let us suppose you need to install a traditional RPM package. For example, you can do this with AnyDesk. It's a TeamViewer alternative made in Germany and I use it all the time to help some friends of me. So I select download now and select download now. And here we have De Debian Ubuntu Mint. I select OpenSUSE and download it here. Here we have it, AnyDesk. RPM. We can't just click on it and install it. We have to open our downloads folder and in the downloads folder, I right click um, it into the right space, select open in terminal and install it via sudo transactional update package and then install and then dot slash 
and now the name of the file. Or you can just remove the dot slash and drag the RPM file into the terminal, then also the right path is inserted and I select enter. Now I need to enter my root password, which we defined in the installation before. I select enter and here we see, okay, the following new packages are going to be installed. This is okay for me. I select Y for yes and it is installing everything, but we have here a signature verification failure, which is bad for security systems. But in the most cases for us, this is completely okay. So I select I and enter then it is ignoring it and installs any desk in the end. So perfect. Now I can close this terminal and close our file manager here. And yeah, now we want to open it and we can't find it. This is because of the transactional system behind microOS. Updates on new packages which are installed right into the system and not as a flat pack are only applied if you reboot the whole system. So I select power off on the right top corner here and select restart. And now let us restart our PC. After I log in into our system again, we can now see any desk we can start it and yeah, can now start using it. So that was the quick start guide for OpenSUSE microOS I don't recommend it to complete new Linux users, but Linux users who want a secure system, which has the latest features and the latest software in it, this system really shines. And because of the FlatHub universe, almost every Linux app now is available right into the software center. And OpenSUSE microOS just delivers a clean, sleek and modern system which makes really fun to use it. Have fun and see you in the next video. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to this YouTube channel and see you in the next one. Bye.